Looming above the city of Williamson, West Virginia, sits the old hospital on College Hill. As is the case anywhere, where there's a hospital, there is death, and where there's death, there are ghost stories. To learn more about the history and the accounts of paranormal activity people have experienced inside the building, we met with Tonya and Mary, who each had strange encounters of their own to share. floor served many different things over a period of time but I think the most fascinating thing to me is the way that they did it back in the days the building that's located beside the hospital is the old nurses college and they would come here and train and this is where they would watch the surgeries and loved ones could come in here and watch their um, loved ones being operated on and it was a pretty common practice up until probably around 1940 or 50 and then they stopped that and then this floor just became regular, um, like doctor's offices and things like that, which we'll see on the other end. Doctors would do the consults. Um, this is also where doctors would take showers. Um, these rooms were mostly just for patients that would come in for cons you know, consults after their surgery. But this room here is kind of fascinating because it has their old lockers and their showers. Oh, wow. Doctor showers, you can come in. Yeah. You can see them. So, what kind of experiences have you guys had up on this fourth floor? Right? This is the fourth floor. Uh -huh. It was mostly pharmacy. Me personally, I've not had any experiences on the fourth floor. Most of the stories that we've heard have been from former employees or nurses or people that worked here um, or patients. The pharmacy was the most popular. Um, people that were either worked in the pharmacy or um, the cleaning crew. They just refused to stay in this hospital past seven o'clock at night because they were so scared because they heard unusual noises, things that they couldn't explain, um, footprints, you know, running down the hallway, and it just freaked them out. Um, I remember one guy telling me that he heard a bunch of coat racks moving back and forth and couldn't explain how that happened or why. So if you really think about it, you know, from the time that this hospital was built, like I said, she's 93 years old, she served so many patients over a period of time and you got to think about you know she went through the Great Depression and then you're in a part of West Virginia where um, there were a lot of murders uh, the May one massacre um, coal mining accidents farming accidents the county that you're in is called Mingo County West Virginia and if you google Mingo County the nickname for this county is called Bloody Mingo because of all the deaths and all the murders and all the massacres and all the wars. So this hospital played a big part in that because when they were hurt, this is where they came to. And when did the hospital close? It closed as a, um, a hospital hospital in 1988. However, she stayed open so several doctors, doctors continued to practice like pediatricians and things like that and those offices didn't close until around 2014 and then once those doctors moved out she was shut down and used for storage until she was purchased by me and my business partner in 2020. I'll start right here because this is probably the most famous history or most famous story, I guess I should say. In 1962, there was a gentleman by the name of Mose Blackburn who killed a city police officer. And he was brought to this hospital um, because after he killed the officer, there was a physical altercation that occurred and they brought Mose here. The research and the art newspaper articles that we found, the story goes that there was a deputy assigned to his room and he had to stay um, on the outside. They said that Mose asked the deputy to go get him a drink of water from the nurse's station, and when he did, he took off running 
and jumped out the third story floor window. There are also stories that something spooked him and told him to do it and that there were evil spirits here, so no one really knows. The thing that fascinates me the most, whether he was thrown, whether he was jumped, we don't know, he was brought back into the hospital and he was actually supposed to recover. He was supposed to um, make a 100% full recovery. He died almost one month to the day that it happened, I think. He's still here on this floor, but that's the window there that he jumped out. And this is the hallway that he ran through to try to escape. This is where on Valentine's Day this year, we had an event here that I was able to help with. I came up here and was just kind of looking around and I did a little recording and I was in the room down here on the end on the left and I just had my phone and I was doing like an EVP session. and. I can play it for you. It kind of sounds like a moan. I can hear a car at one point, but it kind of sounds kind of weird and stuff. So You can take it to the room if yeah. you want to. Yeah, it's, it's, down there. it's on down through here. I came in here and I laid, I laid my phone down right here. And I asked a few questions and things, and you can hear me saying some things on it and stuff, but it's about a two minute little audio recording and, and near the end of it, you can hear something. My name is Mary Ann and I hope to be around in the hospital a lot. I hope to get to know you. There's people that are just interested in this building and they're interested in your stories. See it? I'm not Thank sure what that much. is. Yeah, I heard that. I'm not sure what that is, but I caught that on Valentine's Day this so year. Did you did you hear that with your own ears then? No. You didn't hear that? No. Thank you for sharing that with okay. us. Okay. When we had some events in here, it was 2018. We would just had things on the first floor and in the basement. And then uh, we would take people up to the fourth floor, to the pharmacy area that we showed you guys. We would take them up in the elevator. And uh, the elevator would a lot of times just stop on this floor. And this is a, you know, the type of elevator where you have to push the button on the outside for it to stop. Some of the people running the elevator, it was a gentleman, and he stopped once and he could see like someone run by, he could hear like a girl giggle. Um, I think it was Halloween that year, maybe. Halloween night, we had a lot of yeah. activity. Yeah, we'll tell you about that when we get to the basement. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are making the basement sound I know, I was scary. just thinking, it's like, sounds like it, a lot It's of just, it's, yeah. these rooms are, the basement feels like a t totally different place when yeah. we get down there. Yeah. You yeah. can feel it just as soon as you step off the steps, it's like, you feel like you're stepping into a different place. Yeah. You can just feel that it, it'll give you chills. It does us. I mean, it's just got a lot of history but the elevator she's right the elevator did stop here and to be able to stop this elevator you either got to be on this floor to push the button or the person inside and I'll show you when we go to the first floor because that's where the elevator is. unfortunately it's not working right now we hope to get it up and running soon but we'll show you um, it's one of those old it's the original elevator that came with the hospital so it's got the two doors and it would stop here and we would get that all the time that was kind of wild this is also if you watch the destination fear episode this is where Dakota slept the second floor um, this is where he picked up a lot of activity, and I think Tanner did too on his um, on his recorder. I'll take you to the room where he heard the shattered glass. Here's some of the equipment still in the hospital, and some of it will go off by itself. You can see they're not plugged up. So, and some parts of the building don't even have power, so you'll hear things that we can't explain. We can't tell you why. They'll just go off by themselves. But here's the room, and I don't know if you can still see some of the glass. We we had to pick some of it up because we, you know, with guests and everything, we didn't want them to get it, but the glass was broken here. And then if you come on in, you can see the sound booth. This is where they would come in and, and you can actually go in there. You won't get stuck. And at night, it's really spooky in here. Yes, so. you guys will have to come back up here. Yeah. That's <laughs> this method. Are you sure you want to get shit in there? You want to go in there? <laughs> Sounds fun. But this is where um, Dakota heard the sound. And when he when he walked through here, this is where the broken glass is. And there's no, as you can see, no light fixtures, nothing that would have caused. Um, so I don't know if there was a spirit that was just mad and wanted him off the floor. Um, I don't know where the glass came from. We really don't. The second floor is where also I had 
<laughs> um, kind of a freaky experience last Saturday. We had a group that came in and was doing an overnight paranormal investigation. And it was around eight o'clock in the morning and they had already left. It's just always a habit for me to come through and make sure all, you know, everything's okay and the building's locked up. And I was walking through this hallway, just checking the floors and I got right about here and I heard a male's voice go, hey. And I thought it was one of the, you know, because the group that was here had two guys with them and I thought maybe it was one of the guys left from the group. So I kept saying, is anyone here? Is anyone here? And nobody would answer, but the voice was so clear. I felt like he was standing right beside of me and I never did. I went through the whole hospital and never did find anybody. But what was funny, I messaged the group that was here, they're not of, and um, they said as they were packing up their equipment, they were on this floor because they were in that room where you guys have your equipment and they heard the same thing, they heard a male's voice. So we know that there's a male on this floor. We don't know if it's Moe's. Um, that's a theory that maybe he's come down from the third floor on the second, or if there's just someone else here wanting to tell us something. But it was right here where I heard it, and it was just as plain as day if you guys were talking to me. It was really, and I don't scare easily, but it startled me because it was so clear, and so it gave me chills. The story about this inn is very fascinating. One of the most popular one is the nurse that never clocked out. There was a nurse that got hurt in an automobile accident, I believe in the 1950s. And she was brought to this hospital and the ER at the time was on this end. And she was an ER nurse and, sat, and sadly she passed away in the ER where she worked. In my opinion, the, the biggest evidence about her was on Halloween night in 2018 when we did our last tour. We had one um, guest who came through, did the tours, and all she did was go out. She went out the front and went in between the hospital and the nurses college to take a picture with her iPhone. And all she did was take two pics of the area, and I think she was trying to capture the city actually. But what she got was pretty amazing. We scrolled through a picture in the first one, there wasn't anything, but the second one, you can see an image of what appears to be a nurse, um, probably back in the era of the 50s and 60s. She's got her hair pulled back in a bun. She's got the white uniform on with a red sash and she's coming in that entryway down there because that used to be the ER. Just watch your step because it's really dark. There's no light in the basement at all. All right, you guys have hyped up the basement. Let's, <laughs> let's hear the scariness of this basement. <laughs> Lot to see down here. These all were just offices, as you can see, and you can look in. Um, like I said, they served as pediatric offices the last few years but unfortunately our vandals have come in and kind of done a lot of damage. Um, this used to be before they turned it into maintenance and more like a, a you know, breaker box room and things. It used to be a room where, um, it used to be a surgical room. And let's say like coal miners or farmers, if they were hurt in accidents and had to have a body part amputated, this is where they would bring them to do that. And then the room that I'm gonna take you to next door is called the incinerator room. And then they would throw those body parts in that incinerator to burn them up. Because you know, back in the 20s and 30s, they really didn't have any way to dispose of bodies and body parts. So they did that, I think, up until around the 40s, maybe 50s, and then they kind of changed the whole aspect of this whole thing and just used it more for maintenance. And um, then they stopped using, I guess the incinerator became unethical and couldn't use it. So they used it to burn medicine bottles and newspapers and things like that. But there's still some ashes and stuff in there from the, the body parts and stuff where people had limbs amputated and things like that. So, and, and you kind of guess too that maybe even unclaimed bodies. That, that was one of the things that we were told, you know, like if there were homeless people that passed away and remember this hospital was 93 years old. So she went through the great depression and she went through so many things. If there were homeless people that passed away or, or people that passed away that didn't have families or the unclaimed bodies, we were also told that they would put, that they were instead of just, you know, cause they didn't have really cremation, I think back in the twenties and thirties, so they would just throw them in the incinerator. The incinerator's still in pretty good shape, but to find it, I have to close this in because you would never know it's here. And most of the hospital staff that worked here didn't even know about it. And you can see some of the old medicine bottles on the floor. Uh, we found one and put it up there, that green one. I don't know how old that bottle is, but, um, but I mean, you know, to think about who could be in there and, you know, people lost their lives and are still there to this day. 
just kind of makes you wonder. I would love to know or have some kind of documentary, you know, documents to see who was who was put in there. So if y'all spend some time down here, good luck tonight. Whew, um, it's pretty scary. At, I mean, it's scary now, and it's what four o'clock in the afternoon yeah. or five o'clock in the afternoon. You can imagine at midnight or one o'clock. Tonight, we are at the old hospital on College Hill here in West Virginia and it's a very exciting night because not only are Connor and I investigating tonight, we also have a very special guest investigator. You may have seen her in previous episodes of Paranormal Encounters and she is back by popular demand. Everybody welcome back, my sister Asia. Hi, happy to be here. <laughs> So are you excited to be on another investigation? Yeah, this place looks really spooky, so I'm excited to start. Do you think we're going to get some good stuff tonight? I hope so, fingers crossed. Asia and I already had a little bit of, I don't know if we can explain it or not, we still have to look into it, but we were taking pictures of each other down a hallway with a red light coming from an exit sign. And every time Asia would take pictures of me, every other photo would be like, it looked like you were moving the camera and you yeah. were because I could see you were holding it still. And then when I took pictures of you, it didn't happen. So I don't know what that was about. And then you and I both heard a voice and we don't know if that came from inside or outside, but I thought it's like Connor yeah. when we were setting up. And I know like when I was shooting B-roll throughout the whole building earlier on today, I actually heard a banging noise, which I thought you guys were coming upstairs on the third floor, but you guys were still downstairs in the second floor in our room with the door shut still. So that was kind of weird. So there is definitely something going on in that building. All right, so are you guys good with starting on the first floor and doing an Esther's method and see if we can talk to the nurse that never clocked out as she is known? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, I think it sounds good. I mean, last, they, don't, they don't even know her name. Last time Asia came on an investigation, we did a double Esther's method also at a hospital and we got some interesting stuff. So mm. we're going to try it again and see what we can get. All right, let's go. Let's do it. Help. Asia just said help. Who needs help? Are you the nurse that needs help? There's India and there's Asia down there. You can come through them to answer my questions. God, I'm not hearing... Well... Just said, I was about to say, I'm not hearing anything, but it went, well... Well what? It was a man, but I don't know what he said. I could hear that all the way down here in Asia's ear. Who's trying to speak to Asia? We just want to know how we can help bring closure to you, our families. You still have a round. Help. So Asia said help. Now that India. was me? It's a man's voice. Now India said help. And saying that was me and a man's voice. That was something jarring but I don't know what it said. My name is Connor. That was a man yelling, well, that's what I heard, or something like that. Who's the man that India keeps hearing?
That was another sentence by a man. I don't know what it said. You keep coming through to India. Are you near India? Can you make it so India can understand what you're trying to tell her? Can you slow down a little bit? That was like somebody coughing. That sounded like a woman coughing. That was like somebody coughing. That sounded like a woman coughing. It's kind of crazy. I can actually hear her responses all the way down the hall. It must be really loud. Are you upstairs? Yeah. After our SS method on the first floor, India and Asia decided to head to the basement while I listened to the portal in our base setup on the second floor. I was completely unaware that I was about to hear one of the clearest responses ever captured on our portal. Okay, so right now I'm in the room where this could have been a patient's room. And uh, this is where all of our gear is at right now. And India and Asia are right now heading down into the basement by themselves. They're going to try something down there with, I think, the voice reporters and the REM pod. So, I'm going to try to mess with the portal here and see if there's anyone in this room that was a patient that could speak with me, or if there's anybody on this floor or the next floors up that would want to speak with me. So, here we go. Ooh, ooh, I just heard it sounded like a man's voice. Hmm. Probably nothing. Oh my god, I can't see. Hello? Is there anybody down here? My name's India and this is my sister Asia. And we're just here to talk with you tonight, if that's okay. We're just here to see if anybody is here that wants to communicate. Who's down in the basement right now? It's not going to hurt you, it's called a REM pod and all it does is light up when you touch it and make a noise. I promise it won't hurt you. Could you touch it again for us? You might... Maybe stand back a little bit. Could you touch it 
for us. We've just seen you do it. It'd be brilliant if you could. Again, my name is India. And this is Asia. If you're here, can you make a noise for us? You can move something, throw something. Oh, oh there we thank go. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Could you do it again? Is there anyone in the basement right now? I saw you heard the, an elevator. Like the ding, an elevator makes. It was what? Someone just came through and said it was something. It was who? Is there somebody on the elevator? Is there somebody on the elevator? Yeah. Yeah. Who's on the elevator? Okay, so right now Asia and I have Asia's camera sat up on the REM pod. We're gonna sit just we're sitting just, you know. How, how far would you say, like 10 feet down the hallway yeah. from the REM pod just to try and see if we can get anything else. The REM pod's been going off quite a bit. Can you make the REM pod go off? You've been doing such a great job at doing that. Or make a noise. We know that they had children in this part of the hospital with paediatrics, so if you're young, could you let us know? Could you give us a, a light? Are you able to knock on the wall like this? Still dogs. Dogs in traffic. All right, so what we're gonna do, oh, there we go again. Was that the REM pod? Yeah. Um, hello, are hello. you back? Are you the one making the noises I hear out there? That's you. That's who? Who is that? I'm not making the noises. God, it just said, how do you feel so crystal clear? I feel great if you're talking to me. How do you feel? Oh my God, they give me chills. Thank you so much for coming through. If you're talking to me, I'm feeling great. How are you feeling? Was that a doctor talking to a patient? How do you feel? Who said, how do you feel? Well, 
My name is Connor, and who are you? Can you see me? Oh my god, that was so crazy. Oh my god, that scared me. It was like a hot. Holy crap, that was like a growl. Oof. You ever. You what? Okay, I switched to the second camera because this is getting kind of creepy. I just heard a growl just coming through the portal right now. Is there a patient on this floor with me? Does anybody here know the nurse who passed away from an automobile accident that she died here in an, oper in an operating room? Does anybody know her? After concluding our investigation in the basement, Asia and I left a camera running in the x-ray room while we regrouped with Connor on the second floor to discuss the next phase of our investigation. This is what we captured. For the next part of the night, Asia wanted to go solo in the sound booth on floor two. India and I are gonna go upstairs to do a portal session and leave you here by yourself. While India and I headed upstairs to explore the operating rooms on the fourth floor. So India and Connor are headed above me right now to do some work on the third floor. I'm currently on the second. I'm in the sound booth and I'm going to be trying for the very first time some dowsing rods, which I've never used before, but I've been instructed on how to use them correctly, so I'm going to do my best. And hopefully uh, someone can use these to communicate with me. I can smell something up here. Here. Somewhere here, but I can't see it. You're right in front of it. Is this the elevator? No. No, 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 no. That's not. India. What? Don't. Shh, shh, shh. Shh, shh. There's something over here a second ago. The elevator is through here, isn't it? I think so. I can't tell where I'm at. You need to go first because I can't see anything. Okay, okay, okay. I don't have my phone on me. Okay, right here's the elevator. The elevator's right, right here. here. It's so dark. I just literally heard a ding ding. I don't think the microphone caught that because it wasn't facing the direction. The microphone's facing. Hey, just, let's just stand here for a minute. You're going to have to speak kind of loud, India. I've got my lavalier on. Right? Okay. If somebody's here, can you make a noise?
Hello? Do you want me to open the door? Could you make one of the rods point towards me if you want me to open the door? Could you make the rods point towards me to indicate to me that you're here? Could you make them cross if you are an adult? So right now we are in the viewing room where people used to come to view surgeries that were going on through this glass right here. So we're going to do a portal session and see if we can hear any voices. Connor said he's already heard some very clear ones, so hopefully we'll be able to hear some more up here. Is anybody here with us? A message for who? I heard message for something, I don't know what it says. This is dying to get Anna's back on. Okay. Who do you have a message for? Can you cross the dowsing rods if India and Connor have gone to the third floor? Could you cross the dowsing rods if India and Connor have gone somewhere else? Oh, we are getting there. Okay, so India and Connor have gone somewhere that's not the third floor. Is that right? Could you separate them if that's correct? Right now they're very cross. Could you uncross them if India and Connor have gone somewhere that is not the third floor? Did you make a mistake? Could you open them if they are definitely on the third floor? Maybe you didn't mean to cross them. Or maybe that was me. Can you hear my voice? <coughs> that was a laugh. Oh my God, that was. Who laughed just now? Are you with Asia down in the sound booth? Okay. Who is the surgeon on duty right now? What was that? What was the name of the nurse who passed away, who worked here? Sabrina? I heard something like that. It starts with an S. I couldn't tell, but I caught the end of it when I was looking Sound at it. Sounded like it said Sabrina. Getting no further responses from the portal, we decided to switch things up. I headed back down to the basement to spend some time in the incinerator room, while Asia and Connor made their way up to the third floor to attempt to talk to Mose, a former patient who had jumped out of the third story window and later died in the hospital. Bye. 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 Go, go, Hi. go, go, or I'm going to run out of here. Go. Oh my God, I don't like this. What's that noise? Wait, Asia. Oh, it's the door. Okay, so um, I'm by myself right now in the incinerator room uh, behind me. 
right here is the incinerator, which is said to have human ash still inside. I also, I have a voice recorder going, so I'm going to record and see if um, I can get any responses. And then I also have a REM pod down there. So, oh, there you go. Hello. I'm shaking. <laughs> Hi. Are you down here with me? Did you find the uh, little device I bought? Right, as I mentioned, it goes off. So while India is enjoying herself down in the incinerator, myself and Connor are going up to the third floor um, and hopefully we'll be able to get something exciting up there. Hopefully. Me just hitting the tripod on the stairs. <laughs> Did you find my little light up box? It's called a REM pod. It's not gonna hurt you. If you'd like to just touch it, it's just gonna let me know you're in here. Also, I have an, a little light right here. If you talk into this, I'll be able to hear your voice. So if you could tell me if anybody's in here with me All right, so right now, Asia and I are up here on the third floor. This is where this man was said to have had an altercation with a cop and ran right out this window right behind us and hit the concrete and was still alive, but still ended up dying here in the hospital. So India is right now downstairs in the basement in the incinerary room. So we're gonna do an EVP session and uh, I'll have you actually hold it mm -hmm. and uh, push recording on here. We're gonna see if we can communicate with anybody up here. Um, I think this is a nursery area too, right? Yes, yep. Okay, so here we go. Let's see if we can hear anything go on. So we've been told that up here there's a man by the name of Mose. Do you know anything about him or are you him yourself? Hello? This is not, this is not fun. I don't know why I do this. <laughs> I mean, it is fun, but I'm sitting in this room by myself. It's so dark. Like, if my light goes out, if my camera goes out, I'm not going to see anything. Did you have any children? Were you married? Could you let me know if you're here by making that light up or by talking to me or by making a noise? Oh, there's a noise over there. Hello? Is that you? Is there somebody down the hallway? Is that Mose? I'm gonna go check it out. <laughs> Is there somebody over here?
And then this was an area with oh. Asia. Mm -hmm. Something just moves over here. Is that you? Can you make another noise? I just heard you. Can I help you in any way? What was something you always wanted to do that you never got to do? Did you pass away here? Can you make this light go off again? As you can tell, I'm not from here, I'm from England. Have you ever been to England? Rainbow's going on. You've been to England? Have you been to England? Thank you for doing that. Oh. I can hear you. Are you scratching at something? Asia? I just got a resp yeah. The, the caution things are moving. Are you over here with me? I can hear you. Are you moving the tape around? It's okay if you are. too much longer if you just make one more noise for me and I can leave you alone if you want. Thank you. Asia, mm -hmm. caution tape is moving. Is there a draft or something? I don't feel a draft. You don't feel a draft? I don't feel a draft. We should probably go get India. Yeah, let's go get India. Stop the recording. Before concluding our investigation of the old hospital in College Hill, we left static cameras rolling in the basement, on the third floor, and on the fourth floor, and left the building. After reviewing the footage, we were unable to capture anything on the basement camera, nor did we find anything on the fourth floor camera. We did, however, notice some odd things on the third floor camera. Here is what was captured. From its resting place high atop College Hill, this gorgeous old hospital sits as a haunting reminder of the many lives that started, healed, and ended within its walls. It's still very early days when it comes to researching the paranormal inside this location, but we feel that there is something here, and it's figuring out how best to communicate. As the hospital opens up to more paranormal investigators, we will hopefully be able to get a clearer picture of the patients and staff who may still linger behind. I'd like to welcome you all to Old South Pittsburgh Hospital, PRC, Paranormal Research Center. Uh, I'm Heath, I've been a volunteer here for about probably about four years. You're right now in the lobby of Old South Pittsburgh Hospital. From this point on, there's no electricity in this area, and I'll go ahead and start showing you around the hospital, telling you a little bit of the history.
The hospital opened in 1959 and it was started by four doctors. And when we get to the second floor, I'll show you uh, the pictures. There was so much trash from where this was a antique store, a pet store, an embroidery store, and different things at one time. And since Ronnie, the new owner, bought it, I think we've taken 68 tons of trash, like the big dumpsters out of here. And just this area, we when we were cleaning it, taking the drywall down and everything, we fa actually found that door right there. It was behind the wall. And uh, of course, I mean, you know, it's, the brick was covered up by, by drywall and everything. Here's the restroom on the first floor and the elevators do not work. Uh, we do believe, I think, I'm not 100% sure, but we do think that's the elevator that Dr. O passed away in. What happened to the Dr. O? He, uh, he came in one day and he was, I think, a relatively young man, probably before his 40s, and he passed away, he had a massive heart attack and passed away in the elevator going up. And the week after he passed, there was a nurse, they were really good friends, she came into work from vacation and met him on the elevator going up. Well, she got off the floor to her job and was talking to one of the other nurses. And the other nurse told her, said, uh, I, I'm sorry, but uh, Dr. Rowe is what we call him. Uh, he passed away last week of a massive heart attack. And she's like, no, I just, just had a conversation with him on, on the elevator. They're like, no, I'm sorry you didn't, but uh, he passed away and they said it messed her up and she had to seek some help of some type. And a lot of times in the lobby and everything, you can hear, just hear, hear stuff. Sometimes it's audible voices or just some kind of a noise or something. This is the second floor nurses area and this is where I've had one of my experiences. And I had something talk to me and tell me it was sorry. And of course, over this area is the ICU. I seen a shadow go through, what looked like a shadow go through there and into the break room. And when we were investigating, we actually caught a EVP right here going into the uh, ICU of, and it said deep slumber. And I mean, that's a little bit, correlates a little bit. What flashlight? This bathroom right here, which it's, it's not working. That bathroom right there, a nurse actually had a heart attack and passed away in there. Don't know her name, just know the story and they do have documents of it, but I'm not sure what her name is. And this was not an original, uh, when the hospital opened, this was not here originally. This was an addition to the hospital. And actually over here, you'll see the line uh, that separates the original side of the hospital to the addition. Yeah. That was in the 70s. Yeah, the second, this second floor was added on in the late 60s, like 68 or so. Mm -hmm. And the third floor was added on in the middle, early 70s. Yeah, but a lot of times when we're here, um, most of the time, this is a good area to do an EVP session. Sometimes we'll just sit here and just talk to each other and. You know, sometimes we've had certain things that's, that's happened. And a lot of times it's when you're not recording. This is one of our favorite areas just because, of course, this is where he's had his experiences at. But you really do. I've heard um, the uh, call light. I've heard it. What, we were here one day, um, one morning, drinking coffee, and we were both sitting here and we both heard it. So we couldn't determine that it was anything else. So. That's one thing that you might hear. Mm -hmm. And these were mainly the patient rooms yeah. down through here. But this section of the hospital, like she said, this from right here on is the original hospital. Right here is the actual chapel for the hospital. And here would be cardio. But along these walls are actual articles. And right here are the actual doctors that founded the hospital. We think Havron, supposedly he's had two wives that came up mysteriously killed or murdered. Don't know if it was considered murder, but both times he was here at work, some of the other uh, volunteers have claimed they've caught him on a ghost box or a spirit of sap or something like that. 
But back in this area right here, this would have been day surgery. This is actually shadow hallway. Shadow um, hallway. This is what we That's refer what... to as shadow hallway. So sometimes you can just sit here, turn your lights off, you know, let your eyes focus, then you can actually see um, shadows go across. And even over here in day surgery. This would have been the waiting room. And can't say there's too many hospitals that if you have, are in the waiting room and you need to use the restroom and the body box is right next to you. And you know, you're doing your business, so to speak, and there's bodies right next door. But it was only a two body box. And if they had other bodies, they would stick it in the uh, other x-ray room. And we have two x-ray rooms with the x-ray machines still in them. And you can actually go in there. They had to tear down the wall because they couldn't get the lock off the door. But you can actually go in there. There's a couple chairs. Sometimes people do the testes method in there. Or do ghost box sessions, whatever you want to do. You can tell for a hospital this size, this is not a very big ER. No. So you wouldn't really want to come here unless you had to because they would, if it was something major, they would just patch you up and you know, get you to where you could were mobile and they'd send you to another hospital. And that's one of the other reasons why the hospital closed is because the hospital was too small for the community. And to renovate the hospital, it would cost much more so, than to build a new one. So they built a new one. I always remember the elevators face out front. If y'all get confused or whatever turned around, the uh, operating rooms, there were five, I think, that's what they were. There's one for uh, endoscopy, and then these two would have been operating room one and two. And I, th I think this is the room that Ronnie and him said that the nurse, that what they saw walk, when he walked, they were standing right down there at the nurse's station, said she walked by them and walked down and went in that room and that's what made him buy the hospital. And these are just connecting rooms to the autoclave and nurses and, and a locker room and stuff. And in here would have been labor, labor and delivery, recovery. And yeah, there's a mannequin in there. Don't want to scare you. The nurses, third floor nurses area right here. And this would have been the waiting room for, for people that want to see their family and stuff. The patient's rooms are all down through here. And have you all ever heard of Nellie? Nope. Nellie was a resident here and she had dementia and she passed away in this room right here. And they found her, she was in the fetal position in the corner. And come to find out, we heard a story that the, re the male uh, patients and stuff would tell the nurses uh, can you tell that lady to stop climbing in bed with me at night? And it happened to a number of patients, and we kind of think that it might be Nellie that was doing that. Not sure, but that's just my thinking. Because they would be complaining that this little lady would crawl in bed with them at night. But they never found out who she was. But they say she likes young men, so. So, Connor. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> but that was her bed. And uh, this, they, white, this white one right here? No, oh, no, no, this one right here. They, people bring her toys and there's a gentleman that comes and he brings her flowers. And it's been a while since he's been back. But mainly that's, that's the end of the tour. There's one question we always ask. So do you think we're gonna get pretty good activity tonight? Do you have any advice for us when we're here tonight? Uh, what we should use or any tell you the truth. Tell you the truth, I mean, y'all you know, you, you know it, it, when you investigate, you get what you get. You know, it's, you know how it is. It's not planned or anything. There'll be other people that will tell you, hey, yeah, do this, do this, and but it don't ever happen. I mean, you know, it's, yeah. it, the paranormal does what it wants to do when it wants to do it. Exactly, okay. All right, India, so we have waited a long time to come here to the old South Pittsburgh Hospital. And now that we are finally here and we did our walkthrough earlier with Heath, this place 
is really, really scary looking inside. I mean, it was once a hospital. It's been closed for almost uh, 20 years. So are you excited for tonight's investigation? I am excited. This is a bucket list location for me. So I'm excited to see if we get anything. I know people who have been here and they've had loads of stories. So hopefully with the help of our special guest, <laughs> we will get some activity. So everybody, please welcome back to Paranormal Encounters. If you've watched a few episodes of our show, you may have spotted her in the Sweet Springs episode. She was only in there for like a split second, but she's here tonight to help us do this investigation. Everybody welcome to Paranormal Encounters, my sister, Asia. Hey there. <laughs> Asia. A good one. How are you feeling? I'm just hoping that me being a special guest is gonna set a good tone, you know? Do you think that having a pair of sisters in the hospital might, I don't know, stir up a little bit of activity? Do you think maybe we'll have a little bit of a psychic connection yeah, going Yeah, on? we're always on a similar wavelength, so hopefully that'll come through. Yeah, so we're gonna put you by yourself tonight. How are you feeling about that? I'm excited. I wanna go in head first, so. Are you actually excited or are you just? <laughs> no, no, I'm good. We're gonna go in there, we're gonna see what happens. We've heard some spooky stories and there's been, there's been a lot of death here. It's a hospital and that's usually a good recipe for paranormal activity, so let's go. Okay, so we are starting out on the first floor and right here is the elevator where a doctor here had a heart attack and Asia just walked into uh, something. <laughs> it's okay, everybody, every, I do it and I've been doing this a long time. So that was a great start. <laughs> anyway, right behind me is the elevator where a doctor here had a heart attack and died in the elevator and a nurse saw him and she didn't know that he had passed away. So we've got a REM pod set up and we're gonna also use a voice recorder. And a lot of people will ask us why we don't put EVPs in our episodes when we use a voice recorder. And the answer is we don't catch them. If we did catch them, we would put them in the episode. So maybe tonight will be different and we'll catch something. Let's give it a go. Voice recorder set up. We're on the first floor by the elevator. All right. So if there's anybody here, my name is India. This is my sister Asia and we have Connor. And we have come to communicate with you tonight. I know that lots and lots of people come here to talk to you all the time. And it may get a little draining. You may not like it all the time. You may feel like we're intruding, but we're not here to intrude. We just want to communicate with you have some sort of sign that you're here and we can we can talk about whatever you want to talk about you can share whatever you want to share we have a little orange light on the table right there if you talk by that we'll be able to hear your voice and if you touch the little red light we'll be able to know that you're there because it will light up and make a noise so if you are there could you say something move something make a noise touch something Was there a doctor here or are you still here? Is the doctor still here that passed away in the elevator? Did you talk to your friend after you passed away, after she got back from vacation? What did you tell her? Do you know that you passed away? Is
If I'm in need of medical help, is there a doctor here who can see me? It feels really quiet. All right, let's head on upstairs. Ending EVP session. After having no luck on the first floor, we made our way up to the third floor, which is said to be one of the most active places in the hospital. Because of the size of the hospital, we decided to focus our investigation in the hallway so that we could be in the center of the activity. All right, so right now, we have Asia at the end of the hallway. We have India here, and they're both going to be doing an Estes method. So uh, we've never tried this before. So right now, we're, they're both sweeping at 200 milliseconds forward uh, sweep. And I'm going to be asking questions down here in the middle. I'm going to be whispering so they won't be able to hear me. They can't see each other. They're facing opposite directions. And we're going to see if we can communicate with any spirits that could be up here on the third floor of the old South Pittsburgh Hospital. So here we go. Pain. All right, India just said pain. All right, are there any spirits up here on the third floor with us? I'm gonna be asking questions. We have Asia down here and we have India. If you can speak through them and answer any questions that I might have. What happened to you here? How did you die? How many spirits are up here on the third floor? I heard like maybe a laugh. A laugh? Is that you laughing? Can you tell me your name? Uh, it was a woman's voice. She said maybe Beth or Bath. Okay, India just answered me directly. That's the first direct response. She thinks it said Beth or Bath. And I asked, what's your name? And I said, Beth. Beth, are you up here on the third floor with us? Beth, were you a patient here? Uh, Connor, are you right behind me right now? No. I just, I just felt a footstep right behind me. All right, India, you can't even hear me. Are you right behind India? How many spirits are in this hospital? Just felt it again. Are you moving? I just heard a noise in here. Can you come speak to us? Where are you? Can you make a noise? Tell us your name. Heard a footstep in here. Hughes? That's one, or that's one of them. What is that? Is 
somebody in here? Are you still in this room? It sounded like it just said Benji. Benji. Who is Benji? What is he? Monster. Monster? Okay. That was weird. What is a monster? Peter. Peter. Holmes. Home. Peter. Home. I. I couldn't fix him. Who couldn't you fix? Asthma. You couldn't. You couldn't fix asthma. Are you a doctor? You couldn't fix asthma? Was it for Peter you couldn't fix? Who are we speaking with right now? Dad. Speaking with Dad? Who's dead? Friends. Friends? Pain. Who's in pain? How many spirits are in here? Toe. Toe. All right, nothing's really relevant at this moment. How many people died here? Laugh. With you? There's a voice, but I don't know what he said. Can you tell me one of the doctor's names? I heard what sounded like a heartbeat. That's pretty well relevant here. What's what your doctor's name? Who passed away in the elevator? Can you tell me his name? I can still hear a heartbeat. I could hear a footstep or something. I don't think the camera audio picked that up. Whoa. Another noise. Is that you making the noise? Can you tell me your name? I'm tired. You're tired? Okay, I'm not hearing anything. I'm going to switch off. That was really odd. What? And I didn't notice it until after the fact. I don't know how to turn this off. So, I said, um, toe. And it made me laugh. And then after, the next thing it said was laugh. 
but I didn't notice that until after the fact. It said toe? Uh, yeah, so I went toe, and then the next word that came through was laugh. When we first started, I said, what's your name? India immediately said, Beth or Beth. She said that immediately after I asked that. Really? Yeah, but there were some relevant responses. Like one, you guys both said the person's first and last name. It was really strange. I said Peter, and then the next thing I said was Dad. Well, Dad's middle name is Peter. Yeah. And yeah. I heard Benji. Yeah. Our dog. <laughs> you want, you, oh, oh yeah. that, that reminds me. I said, who is Benji? Immediately, she said monster. <gasps> really? Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, he is a monster. That's like. true. After a strange and rather compelling Estes method, we continued our investigation in another area said to be hot with activity, the second floor nurses station. It wouldn't take long for us to discover that some nurses may still be working their shifts. Okay. All right, India. What are we? Uh, what are we about to do right now? We are about to do everybody's favorite thing, and we're gonna do a portal session. And we also have a REM pod set up. Uh, we're at the nurse's station on floor two. And I've been told by a couple of people, including Richard Estep, a good friend of Paranormal Encounters, that this area is quite active. And he suggested that we spend some time here. So that's what we're doing. And hopefully we'll get something. We'll get some good voices. We'll get just something. So let's give it a go. Hello? What was that? The REM pod. REM pod? Hello? Are you... Um, we're here to see a doctor. Could we get in? Oh, we haven't started the portal and just started going off. Could you touch that light if we could get in? Can we come up to the desk? Okay, thank you. Do you want me to come over there? I've got chills right now. Thank you. Um, could you touch the light if, if I can come up to the desk? I'm trying to pull the volume up. You can use this device over here on the table to speak to us. We're just trying to see a doctor. Or a nurse? Is there a nurse available? That's crazy. We've only been sitting here, for, what, two minutes? Yeah, not even that. You just literally turn on the, the portal. Oh, there you are. Hello. Is there a doctor or a nurse that we can see? Richard, you weren't wrong, mate. Can you light that up to let me know you're here if I need help? Are you a nurse? What was that behind me? Huh? Is that what it said? Yeah. Somebody just hit the window behind me. But it could have been just outside. Yeah, I don't know what that was. Are you a doctor? strange how quiet this is. It's usually not quiet. Who touched the red light on the counter over there? It's 
Should I go over there? Yeah, I'm trying to go over there. Hello? Is there anybody, is there a nurse that can help me? That was a man's voice. Yeah. Is there a doctor? Or or somebody that works at the desk? Is Dr. O available? It's really strange how that went off mm -hmm. so much and now it stopped. If I'm sick, who can I see? Can you give me an estimated wait time to see somebody? That was a sentence. Mm -hmm. Very, very quiet. Mm -hmm. it's, coming. it's coming? Is that what it said? Where's the best place we can communicate with you at? Do you want to just turn this off and, and see if we can hear what we can yeah. hear? Yeah, but I definitely heard a noise. You heard that too, Asia? I heard it. That is a corner area where uh, he said there is a, something with a woman near that bathroom. Was that you that made that noise? Can you make that noise again? There was a noise from down there. Yeah. If you're a nurse here, can you make a noise? Thank you. Are you a male? If you're a male, make a noise. If you're a woman, can you make a noise? Excited from our experiences by the nurses station, we moved on to each take our turn sitting in the body box. Asia and myself did not capture anything. India, however, received a couple of spear box responses. My name is India, what's your name? Maybe like something mama. I don't like the feeling in here at at all. Is anybody in here with me? I, 
I was. Where are you now? To end the night, we left a static camera rolling in the shadow hallway, but unfortunately did not capture anything we deemed to be paranormal. It appeared that the hospital had gone to sleep and we were ready for bed ourselves. So we just finished with our investigation here at the South Pittsburgh Hospital. I had a great time. What did you guys think, Asia? I was pleasantly surprised. I did not think we'd get nearly as much as we did. I think you came in here being very skeptical and I think you came out being really excited with what we got. Yeah, definitely. I'd agree with that. What did you think? I really liked the whole REM pod in the nurse's wing area. Uh, even though we didn't really get much stuff on the portal, it was kind of strange, but I had a really good time here at the old South Pittsburgh Hospital. Would you come back? I would come back. Would you come back? I'd love to come back and do the parts that we didn't do. Yeah, and I would come back too because I think every time you come here you probably get something different. So. Ready to call it a night? Yeah. All right. This is Paranormal Encounters signing off from the old South Pittsburgh Hospital. We'll see you next time. The old South Pittsburgh Hospital is a place where life was both brought into the world and taken out of it. With so many intense moments taking place inside these walls over the years, it's no surprise to us that we were able to experience a glimpse into what once was. Something still lingers here. It's intelligent and it's strong. And it's letting us know that death isn't always the ending. All right, India, so we are back here in Florence, Colorado, but this time we are at a haunted hospital. And it's 100% haunted. Um, India? Ghost tube just closed. You wanna be on camera? Hell's Gate. Hell's Gate? I just heard Hell's Gate. Point those rods to me over here. I stepped over in this direction. It's literally facing me right now. On this episode of Paranormal Encounters, we traveled back to Florence, Colorado, as we had gotten word of an abandoned hospital we just knew we had to investigate. Built in 1932, the St. Joseph Manor originally housed a poultry farm before it went into foreclosure in 1945 and was purchased by a lady named Mary Rankin. She knew that Florence was in dire need of a hospital donated the building to the cause, and in 1948, the Rankin Community Hospital, operated by nuns, opened its doors. In 1968, the hospital underwent an expansion, and the older part of the building became the St. Joseph Manor Nursing Home. In 2001, the hospital shut down for good, and the building stood empty until the Florence Police Station and City Hall moved into the newer part of the structure. The wing that once housed the nursing home still remains vacant to this day. Although St. Joseph Manor has been empty for quite some time, it is thought by some of Florence's police officers and civilians that a few of the former residents may still call the vacant rooms home. We spoke with Devon McKinney, one of the very first people to investigate the hospital, to learn about what her team, Haunted Paranormal, experienced during their night inside. I'm Devin McKinney. I'm the director and founder of Haunter Paranormal. I was taken into St. Joseph's Manor by a community friend who had connections to the police force in the town. I remember my equipment manager, her name is Krista. She had a friend on state patrol and that friend was like, there's this weird old hospital that's up here that's attached to the police station in City Hall and it's 100% haunted and I can get you guys in. What was your first paranormal experience you guys had in that building? We had a lot of weird disembodied voices, but not, I would say more disembodied sounds than anything. Uh, when we were wandering around setting up cameras, we, you know, we were mapping them out and one team would be down in the basement hanging a camera and the team upstairs would be hanging a camera and we would hear the same noises. And it was always weirdly incoherent bumps. It was never like the building settling. It was more like something was knocking to get your attention. Um, that started pretty early in the night. I would say that out of all of the experiences, the most 
profound thing that happened was the thing walking down the hallway and sitting with us. That was a team-wide experience. We all heard it. We all felt it. We all saw it. And we have no explanation for it. Where were you when that happened? So when you walk in through the main hallway and you head straight, you're going to come to another hallway junction. On the left-hand side is a pretty large room. And there used to be a nurse's station set up down there. We had set our entire like nerve center up, all of our cameras, our equipment, our monitors so that we could see everything. That was our little home base. And there was a metal folding chair. And we kind of circulated in and out of that area all night, watching cameras, checking EVPs, stuff like that. And right around the one o'clock area, we had a trigger object, like a REM pod, all the way down at the end of the hallway, hadn't gone off all night. And it finally went off one time, very briefly, just blipped right up to green. And then all of us could hear something walk down the hallway towards us. And suddenly something sat in the metal folding chair right next to us. Uh, it was definitely very pronounced. You could tell that it was the sound of somebody sitting with you. And as far as we know, it didn't leave us for the rest of the night. So we were working with an experimental program. It's an ITC, kind of like the Obelisk. It's called the Alice. And uh, you can put it on a computer. And I had my computer with me. And it didn't pick up very much. It did say a couple of names. But it did tell us at one point that the building was dangerous. Not entirely sure that it is. But it did tell us it was. So So what do you think is actually haunting St. Joseph Manor? Do you think it's the people that were there? Or do you think it's like passing by spirits? I think it's probably the people that were there. It kind of seems like it's on a, not necessarily a schedule, but it's used to a routine. It's used to coming out at certain times. It's used to like being checked on at certain times. So I would say that it's probably people who were there for a long time who left their souls there. All right, India, so we are back here in Florence, Colorado, but this time we are at a haunted hospital that's been studying at Bandit for over a decade. Are you excited for tonight's investigation? I am. I think it's going to be really interesting to see if we can get anything in here. It's one of those places that hasn't been overly investigated, so that could go one of two ways. It could mean that the things that are in here, the spirits, are really eager to talk, or it could mean that they're shy and they don't want to talk at all. We've been told that there are a lot of documented deaths that happened inside this building. And being a hospital and a nursing home, those buildings come with a lot of death. I think we should try and see if we can get any names, any ages, and figure out how these people died. Why don't we uh, do a walkthrough of the location and run Ghost Tube and kind of get an idea of where we want to start? Since we haven't really been able to interview anyone as of this moment while we're here until after, we don't really know where we're going into. We have no idea if we're guaranteed to get anything paranormal tonight on camera. But uh, I think the best thing that we can do is just walk through, get a feel, let ghosts to kind of guide us and let the spirits tell us where they want us to go. So you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's go. All right. So this hospital in India is definitely a lot spookier in the dark. It is. Um, we're guessing that this area at one point was a nurse's station because there's an outlet that's up out of the ground and it looks like a desk has been ripped out. And also it says nurse's room on the tape over there. So yeah, this is probably the nurse's station. Um, so yeah, we'll just see if we can get any responses, I guess. Now let's walk so. through. All right. Okay, if anybody's here, my name is India and this is Connor. And we've come to talk to you tonight. We know that you're probably not too used to this kind of thing. So we're going to help guide you through it. We want you to use your energy, if you can, to come and make yourself known to us, talk to us. You can show yourself if you're able to, you can make a noise, you can move something, slam a door. And we've also got some pieces of equipment that we've brought with us that might help you with talking to us. To start with, the device that Connor has in his hand, if you are able to, you can use that to tell us what you want to tell us. The device has words in it, 
And if you can figure out how to make it talk, we'll be able to hear you. Can you tell us where you want us to go? Yeah, I'm actually solely relying on the night vision now. I can't even see in front of me real well. If you're here, can you let us know, please? Can you tell us your name? Can you tell us how many of you are still living here at the, at the manor? Can you tell us what your room number is? It is spooky in here. Do you need anything? In danger. Oh my God. It just said in danger, India. Are you in danger or are we in danger? Well, that was a great first. You know where I am? I'm right in front of the basement. <laughs> are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> You're right in front of the basement and it says in danger. I guess let's go in the basement, India. It says we're in danger, let's go to the basement. Well, this is gonna get Don't real fall. spooky. Electric. 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 Oh my God, India, what? we're in a, we're in an old hospital. They could have done like, I don't know the history of this place, but I'm just gonna throw this out there. But we've been to hospitals where they've done ele electroshock therapy to people. And we're going to the basement where there was a, supposedly a morgue and x-rays and everything else well, down here. Well, do you need electricity to, to be able to talk to us? can't even see in front of me besides what's on the screen. It's so dark down here. Is there anybody down here? Can we get to know your name? I don't know if you heard, but India said upstairs, my name is Connor and this is India behind me. We just want to get to know your story tonight and figure out why you were here. That's that noise that keeps happening. Okay, so that noise is... I don't know what that, that noise that, is, but we've been hearing that since we got here. I yeah, think it's a bird or something, I don't know. No, that clicking noise is kind of weird. It sounds like snapping. I can't even tell where we are down here. Is there anybody in this room? old medical records right here. Just watch for your step in here. Freaking booby trap in here. Are you still here with us? What was this room used for? Earlier you said in danger. Can you clarify what that meant? Let's go back upstairs maybe. Go back upstairs? Yeah. Let's go. We're going to bring out a piece of equipment to try to communicate with you since you're being kind of quiet on the ghost tube. We're going to try to do an Estes method. They don't know what that is. They do. The ghosts know what an Estes method is? They know everything that happens for Athens. 
Well, if you get electrocuted, they definitely do. <laughs> Let's hope not, because there is water power right there. To further our investigation, we decided it would be a great time to perform our favorite ghost hunting technique, the Estes Method. I chose to listen to the spirit box in the hallway where Ghost Tube had told us, in danger, while Connor roamed the hallway behind me and asked questions. All right. Audio is synced. Is your, are you recording right now? Yeah. All right, we are recording right now. We are syncing the audio. Oh, hey, the ball just went off, India. You want to be on camera? You still here? Good job on doing that. This went off while we were trying to set up the Nestus method in this hallway where we just got in danger. And got OK, so that's me stomping. So it's not us setting that off. OK. Yeah, we just got in danger in ghost tube over here. So we decided to set up an Estes method while setting this up. That capital just went off and clearly it's not us. So someone floor. either came out of the basement or is going into the basement. And there's the oh, REM pod. Oh, hey. Hello? The REM pod is going off now. Okay, now it's starting. Oh, hey, yeah, that's how you use the REM pod. Yeah, just tapping it like that. Is the battery dying? No, but we can go put a new battery in. All right, just being the safe side, I know that thing's going off right now, but we're gonna, I'm gonna go get a new battery. Just in case. I will be right back. Okay. I forgot I left the batteries in my car. So, just went and got a brand new battery we're gonna put in the REM pod and um, make sure that that wasn't because the battery was dying. All right. Brand new battery, brand new battery now in the REM pod. So that was kind of crazy though. So now we eliminated- Weird timing, if that was a dead battery, it's just weird timing. Yeah, no, it was really weird. R really weird timing, that was you. So you ready? Mm. Closet. Oh, I didn't even get that far away and she already said closet. I don't know where a closet, there's a lot of closets here. I'm going to this room in here. All right, I'm in somebody's room. Here's a closet. Here. All right, camera's in the closet. I'm in somebody's room right now. Whose room am I standing in right now? By the way, if you hear like tapping, it's raining outside right now. Smith. Did she say Smith? That's crazy. I can't tell 100%, but if she said Smith, she just answered my question. We're gonna go with it saying Smith. So if this was Smith's room, Did he pass away here? Can you light up that device in the hallway with the red light? Let's move rooms. Let's go in this room. Whose room am I in now? Can you make a noise? Can you light up our devices there in the I don't hall? know. You don't know if you can make a noise? Old. This was an older folks hospital. Man. Old. What do you mean by old? Were you old? Who's in danger? Rest. You're old, so you need to rest. Can you tell me who's in danger? Us. Us. I think they're trying to tell me that they're old, so they're trying to rest. And when they say us, they mean all the spirits here. Well, we just want to get to know you. 
know your story and why you were here. Somebody lit up that cap wall a little bit ago. Can you light that up again? It's right by the stairs. You just gotta touch it or move. Shy. You're this okay. My name is Connor and that's India. We just wanna to get to know you. I understand if you're shy, but we're nice, we're friendly. You did it, someone did it. Somebody lit up the REM pod and the cat ball a little bit ago. Do you know who did that? Leave. I have no idea what she said. I don't know what she said. Can you say that again, please? Is anyone here? Hot. Does someone's heart give out? I don't know where to go. You said danger. Is someone in danger? Is anybody there? Hi. Hi. Did you say hi? Can you repeat that? I'm so far away, I couldn't hear you. How are you? I'm doing good, how are you Stop. doing? Stop. Stop what? While India is doing that, I'm going to run Ghost Tube again to see if anything else goes by because right around this area that I'm at, a little bit where India is more so at. Knife. Uh, oh my God, I wasn't even recording yet and I said knife. Okay, now I'm recording. It just said knife. That's the third response we got here. Is there anybody here? Okay, I'm hearing something on my sh Hi. Hey. Oh, what the heck? Oh, there we go. Where am I? Back. What the hell? It just said, where am I? And India said, back. I don't know. This is a hospital. You tell me where you're at. Hey. Hey. Hi. Hi. There's a bunch of people talking to me right now. Who's saying hey and hi? All right, I'm not hearing much, so I'm going to turn off. All right, so India's stopping right now. For the next part of the night, we moved on to using Ghost Tube Vox, a spirit box for your phone designed by our friends over on the channel Amy's Crypt. This was our first time using the app, but with how much success we previously had with Ghost Tube, we were excited to give Vox a go. Is there anybody here? Can you tell us your name? Shlibbit. Shlibbit. What? Shlibbit. Do you live here? Hell's Gate. Hell's Gate? I just heard Hell's Gate. What the hell does that mean? Hell's Gate? Can you clarify what that means? Oh no, it's quiet. What is Hell's Gate? All the... All the... All the what? Earlier 
earlier on, somebody told us that we were in danger or they were in danger. Who was that? Just your face. Oh my god, that Sing a, this. that's a creepy voice. Who told us in danger? We're alone in the manor. It's your brother. India. Yeah. Was that you? She said. Yes. Yes. Okay. You said yes. Did you? You made that noise. I think it's prop. Trying to make it's tired. I'm making, I'm making adjustments right now, so we can understand what's being said. Oh. So we can make it, so we can understand what's being said right now. Is there anyone there? Can you make another noise? Did you live here or did you work here? Uh, what's, up? what's up? I heard that on the Esther's method, I just didn't say it. So I heard that. Are you in the basement? Oh crap. <laughs> oh crap. That sounded like somebody on the toilet. <laughs> almost out of time. Almost out of time? Line. I said almost, almost out of time. That extra set. That is what? <laughs> what? I don't know what's going on right now. This hallway has so much words going on right now. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Well, thank you. I don't like that voice. Oh, an x-ray. X-ray! It just said x-ray. Are you downstairs in the x-ray room? Maybe we, we need to go down there. In the basement? It just said something like, I need an x-ray or something about an x-ray. We both heard it because we both said it. Yeah. Oh, God. All right, let's go to the basement. Can we go back this way? Here. After 40 feet. Oh, Jesus Christ. Careful, you're going to need an There's a plank of wood there. On Russia. Don't, don't rush, rush her. That's, so it's, it said don't rush her and it sounded British. Right. <laughs> He's not rushing me. It's not right. Uh, yeah. What? What? I, know, I got a cold breeze sitting here from behind. I think it did. I think it did. Do you need an x-ray? Is this where I can see your x-rays? It feels really cold in this room. Does that? I think it's because it's the basement. That's why it feels so cold. Careful when you walk in here. Here's an x-ray vest. Who put this on before? It's so creepy down in this basement. Watch your foot, you're gonna hit this table like I almost did. Good question. Good question. Good question. Who put this on before? It's a yeah. good question. What do you think about people who come here and try to talk to you? Somebody. Somebody. 
Yes, it scared me. I I'm India and this is Kana. What's your name? We came here to talk to you. Can somebody tell us their name? Remains. <laughs> remains? Something remains. We're talking about morgue. I don't know, maybe we're stretching. Oh, there. <laughs> we're gonna go on to the top. Distance. We're gonna go on to the top floor. Oh, an extra. Leaves. Leave? Did you say leave? To conclude our investigation, we decided to go back to an old-fashioned method of ghost hunting and one we don't use very often, dowsing rods. We also had ghost tube running during the session, but due to a technical difficulty you will see in just a moment. The file we recorded on the app is now corrupted, and so we are unable to show you the usual ghost tube overlay we use. So what are we doing right now, India? Uh, we're going to do a dowsing rod session. I'm just trying to get the rods to... Well, I'm waiting for them to even out. I'm keeping my hands as still as possible. If there's anybody here, can you show me your sign for yes with the rods, please? Show me your sign for yes. Okay, so yes is crossed over. Thank you. All right. Even them out for me. I'm keeping my hands really, really still. I know, I see that. Like I'm Don't go there. Don't go there, the ghost tube just said. What's your sign for no? Thank you. Wow. I'm not moving. I know, I'm, I'm, I'm watching your hands. Well, no, I moved a little bit there, but got my elbows on my knees. Just keep them from moving. All right, thank you. Could you straighten them out? Could you please point to where you're standing with the rods? I can't really see them, but... They're not really crossed, but they're crossed facing straight forward to the wall in front of you. You'll have to let me know when they're straight, because I can't... They are straight right now. Okay. Are you a woman? They're literally straight. Are you a man? Sally. Sally? Sally. It just said Sally. Wait. Are you following us from the Sally house? Why were you thinking the same thing I was? Because it's Sally. Yes. Is Sally, and I hate to use this word, but is Sally a demon? Is Sally a demon? Yes. Yeah, it's not crossed all the way as it keeps going back and forth. It's crossing. Oh, it's crossed. Oh. Is Sally the one who said Hell's Gate earlier? Yes. Okay, that's kind of freaky. Maybe that's why I wouldn't answer if it was a man or a woman, because it's not either. 
I mean, I don't believe in demons, but... Point both of the rods to where you're standing. I'm still right at the there. wall, India, again. Try moving the rampart over there. I was just gonna do that. We think just so much alike. I'm putting that device right there where you said you're at. Can you touch it and make it light up? A lot of people say that you're a demon. But I don't really buy that, but that's why I had to ask. Have you attached yourself to Connor? Um, they're touching. Yes. Do you like Connor? They're like they're crossing right now a little bit. Yeah, you like Connor? Yeah, there's something down the hallway that made noise. Just for validation, can you point one more time where you where you're at? Um, India. The ghost tube just closed. What the hell? Why did the ghost ghost tube just close? Did you just close ghost tube? Can you cross those rods if you closed the ghost tube app? They're like crossing right now. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to walk over here. And if you really did close it, okay, we need a couple things to validate that you're really here. Uh, you already know exactly what I was going to say. Oh my God, India. I was just going to say, can you point the rods to me? And now it's pointing exactly back to where it was. This is getting kind of weird. My hands aren't moving, right? No, they're not moving. I'm watching your hands. Your hands are completely still. Can you come bring those rods towards my direction again? This is saying no, it's not even moving. It's like frozen. Can you please point those rods towards me again? I'm over here now. Oh my God. Yeah, they're, they're facing me, India. They are literally facing my direction. What, what am I hearing? There's something back there, India. Sounds like it came in the room right behind you. No, it's back there in the hallway down there. 